And we do continue paying tribute to the late struggle stalwart. I am now joined by Fasia Hassan, who is a former Fees Must Fall student movement leader, and she is now a member of the Gauteng Provincial Legislature and a legal eagle herself. Uh, good to have you with us once again, uh, Fasan. I mean, you and uh, the late uh, Mkulu Bezos have a lot in common. Um, not only are you both in, in the legal fraternity, but you're also both alumni of Wits University. If you could tell us about the encounters that you have had uh, with the late uh, George Bezos in your sphere and the type of impact that he made on you. Thanks for, for having me, Tommy. I think the first thing that I have to say is that I'm very lucky as a young person to have interacted uh, with Uncle George on that level. I think the first time we met, we were young student activists. I don't even know if we're in the SRC yet, um, but I very much recall being in the SRC and him being very involved in one of our first fundraising campaigns before Fees Must Fall even happened, um, the One Million One Month campaign led by the former President Shaira Kala. And he became almost like an ambassador of the campaign, helping us get funding. And I, I just want to also share memory. Uh, we were actually at the Vids Great Hall for one of these related events. And he says to us, you know, we're like these starry eyed young activists. And he points to the one side of, of the Great Hall and he says, I remember very clearly when the security branch came in and they were looking for us. Um, and we were sitting on that side of the hall, and I think it was the vice chancellor at the time who called them um, far right left, uh, sorry, far leftists. Um, and, you know, sort of how his. His activism began when he was also a young person. And I think that's where a lot of that um, affinity for young people really came through. And it, and it wasn't just acid wits. It was through different schools, um, through different organizations. But he was always someone who had his heart and mind open and always had the time for us. And I think that will be the biggest thing that I'm most grateful for. He wasn't inaccessible. He wasn't far off. He was always, you know, a phone call away and close to us. Uh, and that's, that's not something you see often. And, and as you talk about that, Fasia, I, I remember um, you know, reading uh, one of his uh, biographies, something that was written about him, where he talks about the first time he actually met Madiba, that he was actually um, at, at the Great Hall, I think that's where he says he was, and he was just a first-year student at the time. Madiba was already known as a political figure, as an anti-activist, and that Madiba actually approached him and just came up to him with this huge smile. And it, it sounds to me like that is exactly what he then went on to do and to replicate being accessible to young people with talent. But what is it about him that you remember most as a human being, as a man? Well, of course, his, his value system. I think from the very beginning, he was always very specific and very particular about how we have to be, you know, we have to set a high standard for our ethics as, as leaders, even though we were just SRC leaders or student leaders at the time. Um, but he was always, always focused on the pursuit of justice. Um, and whether that was fundraising for students who had nothing, uh, whether that was defending um, as a lawyer different anti-apartheid activists, whether it was even as recently as a few years ago in the LRC. So for me, what I've really taken away from that is it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter really where you are in society, but the pursuit of justice must always be paramount and it must always be um, at, the, at the forefront of what we're doing. Um, and if there's anything I can learn from him also, you know, as, as, a, as I finish my law degree, I could technically be a lawyer, but how to use the skills that we have to better society, you know, um, about that collective interest, not the individual. Um, and that's really something that I think a lot of us could really do a lot more with, especially society as a whole. Fasia, great chatting to you and thank you so much. Uh, truly, uh, as you say, you are one of the lucky ones who has managed to be somewhat mentored by the late George Bezos. Uh, that's uh, Fasia Hassan there.